part of what's been fun about collaborating on The Mandalorian with Lucasfilm and Disney is that we have been able to see through a few technical innovations and a few firsts that I think are going to have a lot of impact on the way uh, television and movies are made moving forward. In partnership with ILM and Epic, we have put together a system whereby which we can have game engine, real-time render, and video wall technology coming together to create a backdrop for the big, beautiful world of Star Wars. The volume is 21 feet tall, it's 75 feet in diameter, run by seven machines, pumping the visuals onto the screen that's, that's been created in pre-production and can be on the screen within 24 hours of, of being final. It's incredibly impressive when you first walk out there because it completely surrounds your peripheral vision. And you really quickly forget that you're indoors and you're not out on some planet's surface. It feels like a real three-dimensional environment surrounding you because it is a three-dimensional environment. You can allow your key creatives to all make decisions together so that the shots are captured entirely in camera, which allows for a better performance. And what was so exciting about this is by bringing those people together, things started to click and we started to realize, well, let's not just do green screen and interactive light. If we're gonna design the whole set and game engine ahead of time, maybe we could have some in-camera effects. Everything in the volume is designed to both light the actors and to be a background that we can directly photograph. So you end up with real-time final pixels in camera. If you look at visual effects, heavy films, you've got a, a film set and then it's gonna to go to post and it's gonna get the world put in. Here we're considering all of that at the same time and how do we create a background and foreground that live together on the volume harmoniously. When we started to play with the idea of using Unreal Engine for virtual production, that's one of the things that uh, Richard and John started to embrace is that you've got this very dynamic world where you can have randomization of things and find the happy accident that gives you the perfect shot. Being able to see the actors point at things and see what they're looking at was pretty transformative. It gave everybody context with the added benefit that if you want to move a mountain from there to there, you can do it instantly. You could switch between the Iceland location to the desert location, all within the same day of shooting. The ability to shoot a 10 hour dawn is extraordinary. To shoot any sequence where you say, oh, this world's not quite right, let's just move it a little bit an extraordinary number of benefits and advantages for shooting in that environment. It's mind-blowing what that tool is. What you see is really what you get, and that's something that really means a lot to filmmakers, especially those who have worked with a more traditional approach in the past. Shots of character in a vehicle traveling through a complex environment is always very difficult to do believably on stage. LED screens are a wonderful solution to that problem because what you're doing is you're taking this technique of image-based lighting that we've been using in computer graphics for years and use it to light a subject. And then we would do shoots where we would texture map real lit surfaces onto our game engine geo and so the camera could move anywhere. We would do interiors like Werner Herzog's office. And then you started doing things like building sets into it, having half a spaceship with reflective surfaces. And so it became exciting because by the end of the season, it was like, let's start designing sets around what this could do well. Just like the good old days. With Star Wars, we're building on a rich legacy of innovation and getting to partner with John Favreau to make his ambitious vision of reality, it's really a game changer for filmmaking. <laughs>